Right so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be doing another Victober check-in and I'll be telling you about how my reading has been going in the last week or so. So I don't have very much new to report this week. My last week has been very crazy at work so I haven't got quite as much reading done as I wanted to and um, so I have finished off two books um, this week both of which I had started previously and I'm also nearing the end of another one which I'll talk about um, but I haven't started anything new in the last week which means I'm now officially behind the crazy Victober schedule that I set myself at the beginning of the month but that is fine. I knew that was bound to happen and hopefully I will still get through um, most of the things I want to read this month. We will see. Um, so the two things I have finished off in the last week, um, one I finished off The Great Exhibition, this is a source book, um, a collection of sources from the time, um, so diary entries, letters, newspaper articles, um, poems written about The Great Exhibition, everything about The Great Exhibition of 1851. This was really really interesting, um, the accompanying like notes were really good as well and the sources themselves were fascinating. It's separated into like lots of different chapters um, that explore the Great Exhibition in different ways. So we have origins and organisation, display, nation, empire and ethnicity, gender, class and afterlives. Um, and it was just really, really an interesting read. Definitely like this is quite academic and this is for someone who is very interested in the Great Exhibition and the Victorian period rather than just like a casual read, but it was really fascinating and I feel like I learned lots of interesting stuff. I've been reading this over the last three weeks since October started and it's been a really interesting read. Um, and then the other thing I finished off in the last week was this. This is The Half Sisters by Geraldine Dewsbury. This is a reread for me and I've been buddy reading it with Marissa from Blakely Bookish and this was so good. I mean I know it was so good, I've read it before, but I just completely adored it and I remembered just all the reasons why I loved it and I really love rereading a book that you love and just remembering all the reasons why you love it. Especially because I'd only read this book once before so it was really nice to reread it and be like, yes, I was correct in my assessment. This is a truly amazing, wonderful, truly fantastic book. So this book follows two sisters um, who share the same father. Um, their father was married to the mother of one um, and had an affair prior to his marriage with the mother of the other. So these young women are half sisters, but they don't know about each other's existence. Um, and one of them comes from a very middle class, um, like, proper respectable Victorian background and the other one is illegitimate, um, poor and becomes an actress um, and society looks down on her for that. But she is an incredibly talented actress and does it really well for herself and the book basically looks at these different women's lives, relationships between them um, and like what it meant to be a woman in the 19th century but also a lot about class and respectability and it's just awesome. It's just fantastic. I feel like this is a really brilliant proto-feminist book and um, I would definitely need to make a feminist Victorians video on it at some point in the next um, few weeks hopefully. This book is just truly fantastic and I think it is so so good and I also think like not just is it a fascinating Victorian novel with really wonderful themes but the writing is so good and so accessible and clear and precise in a way that I feel um, isn't the case necessarily with all Victorian literature, love it as I do, um, and the characters are very well realised and the plot is really good and I just I just think this book is so amazing and so underrated. Like on Goodreads this book has 64 ratings. 64 ratings! Like that makes me so sad because this is such a incredible, fantastic book. So please, if you haven't read The Half Sisters, please, 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 please. It's so good. It, it's so good. It's so good. Right. The thing that I have not quite finished, which I really hoped I would have finished by the time I filmed this video, um, which I've got about 150 pages left of, is Armadale by Willie Collins. I am going to tentatively say that I'm really, really enjoying this. So far, I think it might be my favourite Willie Collins that I've read. Although, I read both The Moonstone and The Woman in White, which are supposed to be two of his best novels when I was like 15, 16. It was more than 10 years ago. I don't really remember them very well. Also, it could all go wrong in the last 150 pages because um, one of the books I've read before by Wilkie Collins, The Two Destinies, I was really enjoying until the last like 50 pages where it just became absolutely terrible and I hated the ending of The Two Destinies so much that it made me completely hate the whole book even though I've been enjoying the rest of it. So it could all go wrong in the last 150 pages, we will see. So far, very, very, very much enjoying this. This tells a story of um, two young men, both called Alan Armandale, who are not related but are linked through events in their father's pasts and various like mysteries 
relate them to each other and no one knows about this like shared history complicated past between them apart from one woman called Lydia Gwilt who turns up and shakes everything up um, and is trying to like scam and cheat everyone around her I love her she is fantastic she's a brilliant character very very good anti-heroine really really enjoying reading stuff from her perspective as well as about the two Alan Armandales so I'm very much enjoying this, very curious to see what happens in the last 150 pages. This might end up being my favourite Wilkie Collins so far, or it could all go wrong. We will see. I will have finished this by next week. Um, I'm hoping that I will finish this like today or tomorrow because I really don't have that much left of it. But um, it's like the, the writing in this book is just incredibly small. This is definitely the longest book I'm tackling this October, apart from Little Dora, which I'm listening to an audiobook. Um, and it's just taken me a really long time to get through, but I'm very much enjoying it, so we will see. So that's what I've been reading in the last um, week or so. I am also still reading Shirley um, for the read-along, though I'm a little bit behind on this. I haven't read as much of it as I should have in the last week or so, so I'm gonna try and catch up on this over the weekend. And then, as I said, I'm still listening to Little Dorrit on audio book I'm halfway through now and I'm just completely adoring it I just yeah Little Dora is a fantastic fantastic book and um, I'm really enjoying this but I don't think I'll manage to finish it off by the end of October because it is quite a long audiobook um, and then I'm also listening to some fairy tales by Oscar Wilde on audiobook me and my partner Nick are listening to them together um, and we're really enjoying them we've got like two stories left so I'll definitely finish that off by the end of the month um, and we just listened to The Happy Prince which is one of his best known fairy tales which I really enjoyed um, um, and the other ones I have quite enjoyed, though some of them are a bit weird, but very interesting anyway, and interesting to see what Oscar Wilde thinks of as a fairy tale and what morals you might draw from it. But there we go. So that's what I've been reading in the last week. Um, I do have like some more plans for the next week. Um, so there isn't that much left now of October. There's like eight, nine nine days? Nine days left. Um, so there are two things which are my priority to read by the end of the month which are both of these. Um, so Lady Anna by Anthony Trollope I would really like to get to because I haven't read any Trollope I think all year and after last year having read 12 books by Anthony Trollope in one year I, I really feel like I need to get back um, with some Anthony Trollope um, and actually this is 500 pages but the writing is about double the size of the writing in my copy of Armadale so I do actually think this will take me too long to get through um, and I always find Trollope very readable so that's definitely a priority for the next week to finish um, and then I'd also like to start The Whirlpool by George Gissing which I've also been meaning to read for ages um, and I think should be really enjoyable because I always really like George Gissing. This is slightly fewer pages than Lady Anna but slightly bigger writing so we'll see how I get on with this. Um, and then the other thing I was really hoping to read in Victober um, was this which is The Romance of the Shop by Amy Levy. I'm not sure I will get to this because that's less of a priority than Lady Anna and The Whirlpool but we'll see how the next week goes and it's very short so um, I might be able to fit it in or I might just read it in November instead. Um, there are a couple of other things that were on my TBR the beginning of the month but I've sort of given up on getting to them now um, but that is fine. I think that is all I wanted to say for today. Please let me know how your Victober is going, what are you planning on reading in the last like nine or ten days of Victober and that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Mm -hmm.